Throughout the entire 20 seasons of Family Guy so far, we notice one thing, which is that Meg Griffin's love life never ends up going her way. Why is that? Could it be due to her appearance, social skills, or just luck? Well, it's all of those reasons and many more, which I'll explain later on. Let's start from the beginning of her love life in season 6 of Family Guy. Meg gets her first rush of love at first sight, she falls in love with the doctor called Michael. At first, everything seemed perfect. Michael being tall and handsome with a stable job is Meg's perfect man. Until Meg announces something unexpected, she is pregnant. The two decided to speed run their relationship to the final stage, marriage. Meg finds out that she's not pregnant, but does she tell Michael the truth straight away? She does not. Previously, I talked about the reasons why her love life is failing. Here's another reason, desperation. She lets the relationship carry on despite knowing it's built upon lies. Meg waited till the last second to tell Michael the truth, hoping he wouldn't care so they could tie the knot. But when her dream partner finally gets told the truth, he leaves Meg in a heartbeat at the altar. Now that was just the beginning of Meg's love life going horribly wrong. In season 8 episode 11, she dates a prisoner called Luke. The reason why Meg's relationship failed this time with her new boyfriend Luke was honestly just bad luck. Luke was a prisoner, so you would assume he's done something awful, but he was actually just a nice guy who got arrested for stealing medicine to treat his sick mother. When Luke escapes from prison, he meets up with Meg. The brief moment they spend together ends up being one of the highlights of Meg's romantic life. Luke ends up getting caught by Joe since he lives right next door to the Griffins. When Luke got arrested, it affected Meg. Not only did it affect her love life, but it also damaged her whole life as she ended up going to jail for harboring an escaped convict. When she comes out of prison, her whole demeanor has changed. From an innocent, sweet, caring girl that nobody likes, to a violent, aggressive girl that nobody likes. Granted, she's definitely a lot cooler now than before, but it's still crazy how one relationship that went wrong due to bad luck affected her life this badly. Just a bit later on in season 8, she also ended up dating Anthony. But before we talk about him, we were also shown a short brief moment of Meg's previous disaster boyfriend, who seemed perfectly normal, until we found out he had no legs. So when Meg manages to date Anthony, it became a shock to everyone. Lois and Peter even went as far as getting Dr. Hartman to examine Anthony in front of everyone, which must have been super embarrassing for Meg. But of course, not everything was smooth sailing for Meg, as it turns out, Lois was also interested in Anthony, despite being somewhat happily engaged to Peter for 20 years. Meg witnesses Lois and Anthony making out, which makes her depressed. What happened next is what we didn't expect. You would assume that they would have a mother and daughter chat and everything would be fine. But nope, the writers of the show finally gave Meg a backbone, and she called out Lois saying she is old and doesn't know the real Meg which causes her to rip out her tooth and reveal some crazy things Meg and her boyfriend did. Next, we have another rough patch in her love life later on in the series. In season 10, episode 7, she dates an Amish guy. When Meg falls for an Amish boy named Eli, their relationship becomes rocky when Eli's father refuses to let Eli spend time with Meg. Due to the differences in their lifestyle, Eli runs away with Meg. The Griffins, especially Peter, ends up in a conflict with the Amish. This causes Eli to choose a side. Unfortunately for Meg, he decides to say his goodbyes to her as he stays with the Amish people. It's understandable that Meg's relationship failed this time as both of their lifestyles are just too different to be compatible. The love story doesn't end here for Meg. Later on in season 10, she has another go at finding love. The whole episode was somewhat an extremely dark matter at first with Meg being kidnapped while in Europe and being sold at a sex slave auction. It really did seem like Meg's chances at a decent relationship were completely over. Until it became clear that the bidder bought her for his son. Prince Faisal, who happened to be a charming handsome guy. When he romantically proposes, she gladly accepted. But before they could kiss, Stewie takes him out. Meg watched in horror that her future husband has just been killed. Meg gets her mind wiped so she doesn't remember any of it. If Stewie did not kill him, this could have definitely been Meg's perfect relationship. Later on, we have an awkward bump in her love life. In season 11, episode 7, it showed how desperate Meg is yet again for love. The episode starts off with Meg thinking she was on a date with Kent, the popular kid that goes to their school. 
Meg tries to go in for the kiss but gets rejected as Kent reveals he is gay and likes Chris, which completely shocks Meg. This should be the end of the story for Meg's love life in this episode, but she starts to become delusional and Meg starts acting even more desperate trying to force Kent to hook up with her, but gets rejected once more. Meg, who's literally on the verge of snapping, gets some drugs from Quagmire to try and drug Kent so she can sleep with him. Kent finds out and calls out Meg as a psychopath, ending her relationship journey with Kent. Not like that there was one to begin with in the first place. A few episodes later in season 11, we have a special day in Quahog, Valentine's Day. Meg decides to spend the day with Toby who is a complete stranger she met online. Everything was going well on their date until she gets drugged and woke up in a motel, only to find he has harvested one of her kidneys. Meg didn't really care that much that he stole her kidney, but she held him up to the promise of spending a whole day together instead. After having a wonderful day doing random stuff, Toby decides to give Meg back her kidney. Although some might say this is one of the better relationships Meg Griffin has been through, it's still definitely not normal. The next one is a bit of a disaster. In season 18, episode 1, the Griffin family decides to go on a cruise. Meg Griffin meets Chad, who is a staff member of the crew. But when he confesses his love for her, the ship is struck by a rogue wave and capsizes, decapitating him completely. Despite this, Meg can't cope with the fact he is dead and becomes extremely delusional as she continues to carry his corpse around the ship thinking that he could be saved somehow with medical help. In season 19, we definitely had an odd relationship with Meg and Bruce. It's difficult to say this was much of a relationship since Bruce is clearly gay and was uncomfortable with going through with marrying Meg despite wanting to please his parents. Meg could have definitely gone through with this and gotten married, but she decided to do the right thing and call the wedding off so that Bruce can be with his lover. The latest event in Meg's love life was definitely a strange one. In season 20 episode 15, due to a mustard packet Meg was slurping on, she caught E. coli, which caused Meg to hallucinate an entire fake relationship with Seymour. The kissing, the running away from the police together and the time spent together was all fake. Chris manages to snap some sense back into her and Meg eventually realises none of it's real. The end of the episode becomes more confusing when it turns out the real Seymour was wearing a VR headset and the whole relationship with Meg for him was just in VR for him. This raises the question, is Meg's love life truly destined to fail every time? Due to her desperation, bad luck, or the fact that most people find her appearance and personality awful. What do you guys think? But anyway, that was the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel. We're the Screen Addicts, addicted to the screen as much as you.